just lift your hands up to him. I just appreciate him from the depth of your heart tonight. Yes, let your heart be lifted up to him. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence like never before. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Yes, Lord. Move upon our spirits. Let there be a staring up in your heart. A staring up in your heart towards Him. He surrendered. He said, Lord, I'm surrendering all to you. You will be my numero uno. I yield all to you. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lord, our hearts are lifted up to you tonight in absolute surrender. Our hearts are yearning. Lord, only your will will be done in the name of Jesus. You gave us our free wills not to choose what we like, not to do what we desire, but to choose to do your will. Father, ingrain these upon the tables of our hearts and help us the truth to know that there is no other will to be thought of or to be lived except your will. Bring us into alignment in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have worshipped. And the people of God say, let's give it up to the Lord tonight. Thank you, precious voices. And I'm sure you can do better than that. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, have you totally surrendered in your heart? Have you totally surrendered? Have you totally, totally surrendered to the Lord? Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. There is no other place to be except to be in the center of the will of God. Hallelujah. And I pray that every day the Spirit will help us to submit even to his will in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Let's give it up to him this evening one more time. Amen and amen. You may be seated in his presence. Hallelujah. Today is the eighth day of August, and um, last week, Thursday, the very first day of August, a 10-day national protest was started, and um, during that period, that same Thursday was the day we began this new series, which we run parallel on Thursdays by the grace of God. And this new series is intended. 
that by the grace of God, it will get into the ears and the hearts of our leaders so that they can make the necessary ethical adjustments. Can I have an amen? Because of the mood of the nation, we had to do, we couldn't even hold the service. But we did online. Hallelujah. So tonight I'll be reloading that service, that particular part one of the message which we have titled The God Factor in Governance or Leadership. The God Factor in Governance or Leadership. Hallelujah. Let me tell you anybody, the God Factor in Governance. The God Factor in Leadership. Hallelujah. Our text is from Psalm 72. Psalm 72. And I first preached this series for the very first time in 2020 during COVID. Hallelujah. But it cannot be more relevant than in the seasons that we are in. I'm sure you know that the word of God never expires. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. It's always amazing when we read the word of God and see some truth from the word of God. You'll be wondering, did God know that this is going to be happening in Nigeria at this point? You'll be wondering, did God know that I will be going through this situation? But because he's the almighty God, he knows all things. And he has made provisions for every and all situations we may find ourselves. No wonder the writer of Hebrews said in Proverbs 25. Proverbs 25. Give me verse 2. From verse 1 and 2. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. But it is the honor of kings to search out the matter. Proverbs these also are Proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied. Verse 2. Is the glory of God to what? Conceal things. But the glory of kings is what? To search things out. Many of the solutions to the challenges we are going through, they are concealed. Where? In the word of God. But you and I have been made kings and priests unto our God. And if indeed we are kings, then it is the glory of kings to search things out. Hallelujah. There is no situation you may be going through that has no replica in the scriptures. Your duty is to search it out. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. So Psalm 72, the entire chapter, but we'll read verses 1 to 8. As we look into this subject matter, hallelujah, we'll be using the New Living Translation for our text. Give your love of justice to the king, O God, and righteousness to the king's son. Hallelujah. Help him to judge your people in the right way. And let the poor always be treated how? Fairly. May the mountains yield prosperity for all. And may the hills be fruitful. Help him to defend the poor. To rescue the children of the needy. And to crush their oppressors. May they fear you as long as the sun shines. And as long as the moon remains in the sky. Yes, forever. 
May the king's rule be refreshing like spring rain on freshly cut grass, like the showers that water the earth. And may all the godly flourishing flourish during his reign. I thought I would have an amen. amen. May there be abundant prosperity until the moon is no more. That talks in of forever. May there be abundant prosperity until the moon is no more. May he reign from sea to sea and from the Euphrates River to the ends of the earth. In the name of Jesus. Let's read on to about 12. 9. Desert nomads will bow before him and his enemies will fall before him in the dust. The western kings of Tashish and other distant lands will bring him tribute. The eastern kings of Sheba and Seba will bring him gifts. What kind of gifts come from Sheba? Gold. I, thought, I know you are smarter than that. The queen of Sheba brought what? Gold to who? Solomon. All kings will bow before him. And all nations will serve him. He will rescue the poor when they cry to him. He will help the oppressed who have no one to defend them. In the name of Jesus. Please engage yourself with reading the entire chapter. Because we'll be touching on them as we go on. Hallelujah. We did say that this psalm summarizes for Solomon the qualities of a king or leader or governor or president that God expects to lead or govern a people and then the attendant benefits that we pursue such a person. It prescribes how a ruler, a governor, a king, a leader should lead and then talks also about the benefits. And um, there are four things that are clear from this manner or expectation of God for leaders and those in governance. The first one is that they must be righteous. God expects all those in leadership in one form of leadership or the other, to be righteous. In other words, to be moral and to be just. Number two, God expects all those in leadership to be beneficent. In other words, to be useful, to be helpful. Whenever you are in a leadership position, you are not just there as an hanger, but you are there to be beneficent, to be helpful, to be useful to those you are leading, to be useful to your environment, to be useful to your organization. Hallelujah. And number three, you expect that leadership and these qualities he's talking about is universal. Whether you are leading at home or you are a homemaker or housewife, you expect these same principles to work or you are a business mogul or you are an entrepreneur or a Greek preneur or tech preneur, whatever preneur it is that is yours, or you are in government or you are a career person, you expect that these principles we cut across. They are universal. We see that in verses 8 to 11. And number four, these principles are meant to be perpetual. Your rulership is meant to be perpetual as a king when you practice this leadership or governance model that God is giving us. And what do we mean by being perpetual? It's not saying that you are going to be on the throne forever because no man can even be on this side of eternity forever. But what God is simply saying by being perpetual, verses 15 and 17, you will see, is that it will be long-lasting and it will be unending. Can I have an amen? What does that mean? I'm a president for four years. How can my reign or rulership be perpetual? How can my governance be perpetual? 
what he's simply saying, whether you rule or reign or you are in governance for four years, God is saying your legacy ought to be perpetual. Hallelujah. Why are we still talking of David today? Because he's God's model of leadership. Hallelujah. What is Adolf Hitler known for? Huh? Nobody can tell me. You don't know Adolf Hitler? Do you? Is he an example of a good leader? Maybe in his own way. Maybe. But we know him for something. Isn't it? Praise God. Mention a Nigerian leader that we know for very good governance, whose name is still ringing a bell today. How many years did he rule for, or did he govern? Two years. Just two years. Right? May to May. He died May 5. So you know. Hallelujah. History will record that though this man governed for two years, but his reign will be perpetual because of legacy. Can I have an amen? Name a despot in this land who ruled us and we knew we had a leader. You said Abacha. You said it. Who remembers him? Huh? Do you remember whether anybody like that? You do, but does it matter? I'm just illustrating what God means by being perpetual. After a while, you forget them. Can I have an amen? Praise God forevermore. Friends, God expects that our leadership will be perpetual. That long after you have gone and left the scene, you leave your footprints on the sands of time. Long live the king. Hallelujah. God expects our rulership, our leadership to be perpetual. You are in a place, you worked in a place for five years, and ten years after you left the place, they are still talking about you. They are still referring to the period that you spent there. So God expects our leadership when we follow this model to be perpetual. And I'm praying that his grace will be sufficient for you. And your rulership, your leadership will be perpetual in the name of Jesus. Friends, in these days of economic turmoil, where the kind of inflation that has come upon us. The other day, I saw somebody sent a post. In 1970 something, that a Pojo 504 car was selling for how much? 1,800 or something like that, or 1,700. How much is that? What can that buy now? They liken it to a loaf of bread. Oh, it can't buy a loaf of bread anymore. And a couple of years back, that is the cost of a car. So what you use to buy bread now was what you will use and count to buy a motor car. Hallelujah. In these kind of days, we need another model of leadership. Because it's just not working. Hallelujah. High prices frustrating Nigerians. Thank you. Put our hands together for our technology. Look at the speed which we were able to pull that out. I didn't brief them. They don't have my notes. Please put it back. Let's tantalize you with it. In 1975, a car was 1,700. 
And in 2024, a loaf of bread is 1,800. Oh, it's 2,000. So this is being conservative. But for illustration purpose, let's even assume. How do you explain this? How did we get here? Should we not ask? How did we get here? What we need is leadership. The God kind of leadership. We need the God factor in governance. Hallelujah. So this is what has informed this message. Because it's not just working. What is our GDP? We are running a presidential kind of government. A president with an all-powerful And yet, we'll go deep as we dive on. Can I have an amen? So what is needed across every strata of our nation is leadership. A leadership that understands God's standard for leading. A leadership that is divinely empowered to do what is morally right. Please take note of that. A leadership that is divinely empowered to do what is right. Listen, friends, the natural man, the man that is of, you know, the natural man is not faithful. The natural man is not loyal. The natural man is not moral. The natural man's heart is wicked. It takes a man who has been supernaturally transformed to have a loyal heart, to be faithful, to be moral. Can I have an amen? Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6. Let's establish that. The natural man, you can't be faithful just by your natural self. Situations will come that will make you unfaithful. You can't just be moral by yourself. You are a natural man. A man that has not received the transforming power of God. Proverbs 26. Many will say they are loyal friends, but who can find one who is truly reliable? ESV. Many a man proclaims his own steadfast love. The godly walk, no, just verse 6. Many a man proclaims his own steadfast love, but a faithful man, who can, who can find? It's tough. You can proclaim that, yes, I'm faithful, I'm loyal, I'm true, I'm reliable. But God is saying, a faithful man, who can find? Psalm 12. Give me Psalm 12, verses 1 and 2. NIV. Psalm 12, verses 1 and 2. So it's not about somebody saying, yes, it's this or that. We need the God factor. A Psalm of David, help, Lord. For, can we read together? For no one is, those who are loyal have vanished from the human race. Everyone lies to their neighbor. They flatter with their lips, but harbor, hallelujah. Can I have an Amen. Everyone lies to their neighbor. They flatter with their lips, but harbor deception in their hearts. Help, Lord. Who can find the faithful? Help, Lord. They are vanished from the face of the earth. Help, Lord. Hallelujah. Give me Micah. It appears, Micah chapter 7, verses 2 and 3. It appears that prophet Micah saw the Nigeria of today. Micah chapter 7 verses 1 and 2 and 3. New Living Translation. NLT. The godly people have all they have all disappeared from governance. Not one honest person is left on the earth. They are all murderers setting traps even for their own 
both their hands are equally skilled at doing what? Have we not been called the evil genius of the world? We can hack anything hackable. But let's use that power we are using to hack to develop something to deliver to the world. Both their hands are equally skilled at doing evil. Officials and judges alike demand. Did this guy not talk? Is he not talking about Nigeria? When was the Bible written? Over 2,000 years. The Old Testament is about three or 4,000 years old. The people with influence, they do what? Talk to me. They get what they want. Don't they? And together, they scheme to twist. Are you sure that this guy is not talking about Nigeria especially? Hallelujah. And this is why you should fear God. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter but the honor of kings to search it out. So, when we talk about the God factor in governance, it's not about, and of course, you know Romans 3.10. No, there is none that is righteous in the land. We are talking of God factor. It's not by power. It's not by might. It's not by, oh, I have the experience. It's not by, I have the skill. No. It's much more than that. It's much more than your skill. It's much more than your experience. It's about the God factor in governance. Hallelujah. It's much more. We're talking about a leadership with the endowed qualities or character of being just, impartial or fair from the Lord. Leadership that is endowed, that has received the supernatural touch of God to be able to do what is right. Cyrus was a king in that class. Give me Isaiah chapter 45. Isaiah chapter 45. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, hallelujah, whose right hand I have grasped. Cyrus was an heathen king, the king of Babylon. But when the God factor came upon him, it says, first says the Lord to his anointed. A heathen king because of the God factor, became anointed. He said, his right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and to lose the belt of kings, to open doors before him that gates may not be closed. Next verse says, I will go before you and level the exalted places. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. And I will give you, verse 3, the treasures the hidden treasures. Verse 3. I will give you even the treasures of darkness and the hearts in secret places that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. Can I have an amen? amen. We're talking about the God factor in governance. It's not so much the fact that, oh, well, I have the experience. It's not so much about the fact that, oh, we have done it before. It's only when God gives you to do. Hallelujah. We have all the qualifications. If the God factor is missing, all your qualifications will amount to nothing. Glory to God. We are talking about the God factor in governance. A leadership that conforms to the principle or ideals of righteousness. A leadership or a government that has the institutional capacity to administer what is just. That capacity is not just taken. It's not just given or taken for granted. It must be endowed by no one else except the Lord. 
the leadership or government that has the institutional capacity to administer what is just, that we demonstrate impartiality in the settlement of conflicting claims. A leadership or government with the institutional capacity for the establishment and determination of citizens' rights according to the rules of law and equity based on facts, figures, and accurate data. Not a wishy-washy, sentimental, or ethnic, or nepotic government that cannot withstand simple accountability tests. Can I have an amen? That's the demand of this season. A genuine response of leadership in the tough times like we're experiencing in Nigeria of today. And God will cause such leadership to arise in the name of Jesus. Let's go back to our text, Psalm 71, and begin to unpack what this is all about. Psalm 71, NLT, verse 1. Psalm 71, New Living Translation, verse number 1. Give your love Psalm 72, pardon me. Give your love of justice to the king, O God, and righteousness to the king's son. Hallelujah. So the first thing we need to take note of is that justice and righteousness are God's gifts. To his chosen leaders. There is gift. It says give your love of justice. And righteousness. There is gifts. You cannot be a good governor. Without these two instruments. And you can't acquire them from any other place. Except from the Lord. Shout Hallelujah. So when you see a leader who demonstrates the capacity for justice, the capacity for righteousness, for doing things right, it is an indication of a leader that has been called to the position by God. It's not natural. We saw it in the various scriptures we have examined. To be faithful, to be loyal, to be true, to be moral, they are not natural. So when you see somebody in leadership that is exercising justice, exercising righteousness, is, is an indication of one that is in that position by the auspices of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When you promote yourself or you are sponsored by men, there is no way you can demonstrate justice and righteousness. Because he who pays the piper does what? Dictates the tune. If men came together to put you there, they will make demand on you and they will, you'll be a puppet. Even if you wanted to do, you will not be able to do. They will say, what's the popular Nigerian saying? What's the popular Nigerian saying? My hands are Hallelujah. Who tied it? Who tied it? The result is what you are seeing in one of the states of Nigeria today. You know the state. Hallelujah. When men put you in a position, they will make demands on you and you have no choice. Hallelujah. Justice and righteousness are God's gifts to his chosen leaders. They are gifts from the Lord. 1 Kings chapter 3. 1 Kings chapter 3. Let's see what happened to Solomon. And what he requested of the king in establishing this truth. 1 Kings 3, let's read verses 4 to 5. Then we jump to 9 to 14. The most important of these places 
Now the king went to Gibeon, 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 4. The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. And Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. And at Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night and said, Ask what I shall give you. Hallelujah. Let's be honest. Tell me. If God were to appear to you tonight and say, ask, what should I give you? What are you going to ask for? Microphone. Yeah, get the microphone. Uh -huh. Mrs. Samuel. Mrs. said Samuel. If God were to appear to you tonight and say, ask, what shall I give you? What will you ask? I'll ask for connection. <laughs> Thank you for being honest. Put your hands together for her. Yes, don't go too far. Oh, yeah. Yes, bro. Yes. What will you ask for? Power. <laughs> to do what? To kill all your enemies. Power. Please let him explain. Power to do what? To rule Nigeria. How it's supposed to be. To rule. Hallelujah. He's asking for power. You are not in a position. That's not realistic, you know. Hallelujah. Somebody asked for connection. We know what that means. Connection to move in high places. Yeah, don't go. Yeah, Mrs. Uh, Awobule. Yes. Yes. What would you ask for? Be sincere with yourself. Money. Hallelujah. Put, please, put, put your hands together for her. She says money. <laughs> Kudi owo. Hallelujah. Yeah, come to this place. Come to this side. Let's see. If God were to ask, appear to you and say, what shall I give you? What will you ask for? Be sincere. Unlimited flow of hard currency. <laughs> you see, elevated, the unlimited flow of hard currency. Please put your hands together for her. Not soft. Naira is no, no longer cutting it. Hallelujah. Uh, ask uh, Friday. Yeah. At the back. Yeah. Uh, Richard, sorry. Richard. Uh, oh yeah. God is appearing to you and say, what shall I give you? I will ask for the ability to time travel 15 years back. To travel 15 years back? back. To go and do what? <laughs> to go and change so many things in my life. Eh? To change so many things in my life with this ability that I have now. Hallelujah. Please, let's put our hands together for him. He will ask for Astra's travel backward 15 years so that they can change some things. Mm, that is loaded. Let me give you Genesis 13. Abraham, after Lot departed from him, verse 10 or so, what did God say? Lift up your eyes now from where you are. Don't look back, son. It's not the time to look back. It's the time to forget the past and march on towards a glorious future. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God forevermore. Yes, we've seen what we will ask for. And that's been sincere. But here was a young man who had just been made a king. He inherited the throne from his father. And he used to offer a thousand burnt offerings. That was his manner of work. We saw that. He used to. He was used to it. Always offering and blessing the Lord. And then God came one night and said, look, ask, what shall I give you? What shall I give you? Verse 9, verse 7. Now, O Lord my God, verse 7. Just continue verse 6 and then we go to 7. I can't read what is on the screen. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king. In place of David, my father. Although I am but a little. This is a king. But before the king of kings and the lord of lords, he says, I am but a little. I do not know how to go out or come in. I'm not going to depend on the pedigree of my father. He was a man that was after your heart. But I don't know how to go about this. Hallelujah. I do not know. I'm a little child. Next verse. 
And here I am, sat down in the middle of the people you have chosen. A great people, far too many to ever count. Look at that, a great people. He did not say, call himself, I'm a great king of a people. He exalted the people, the office of the citizen, over and above that of his own. He says, I am a little child, and you have set me to lead this your great people. I don't know how to go about it. For many in leadership today, they look down on those they are to lead as if they are the ones who give back to them. Can I have an amen? They talk down on everybody, not knowing that you are there, courtesy of the people. Whether you rigged it, it's because allegedly the people voted for you. So how come you think you are in an office that is bigger than the people by whose vote you got to where you are? Do you see the paradox? But here, look at what Solomon is doing. Setting the record straight for us. He says, these people are great. I am a little child. I don't know how to go out or come in. And verse 8, and your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too many to be numbered or counted for multitude. Verse 9. Give your what? Give your what? Give your what? Your servant. You must have a servant mentality. A servant leader. You are there to serve. A servant serves. Give your servant therefore an understanding mind to govern your people. That I may discern between what? Good and evil. For who is able to govern this your great people? Who is able? It's not about ability. It's not about ability. It's not about competence. Thank God for your competence. But when it comes to proper and true leadership, it's not just about your confidence. Can I have an amen? Verse 10. The speech pleased the Lord. And then Solomon had asked this thing. Then what did he do? And God said to him, because you have asked this, I have not asked for yourself. What? Long life. Or? Or? The life of your enemies. But you have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. And understanding hearts. That's what he asked for. Therefore, behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and a discerning mind. So that none like you has been before you. And none like you shall arise after you. Hallelujah. I've also given you what you have not asked for. Shout hallelujah. Look at that. I've also given you what you have not. What are they? Both riches and honor. So that no other king shall compare with you all your days. Finito. You can parallel that with Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the what? The kingdom of God. And it's and every other thing that you have not asked will be added. Hallelujah. See how God dealt with Solomon. See what he asked for. A wise and understanding heart. And verse 14, that wasn't all. Verse 14, and if you walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will what? Lengthen your days. Even long life. Shout hallelujah. May God give you all that you have not asked for. That will make your life a life of luxury. In the name of Jesus. He asked for wisdom to be able to govern. God says, I will give you riches. I will give you honor. And I will give you long life. Isn't that what we are all chasing? Isn't it? Chasing riches. Chasing honor, fame, to be a big man, to be addressed as a big man. Chasing long life. But see how God gave it on a platter. Shout hallelujah. May you know the right thing to ask the Lord. May the Lord indict a good matter in your heart. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Friends, we're talking about the God factor in governance. Both righteousness and justice, they are God's divine abilities. You must desire them and ask God for them in prayers. In whatever area of leadership, we have said leadership is, God expects it to be universal. Whether as a school prefect, as a student, whether as a, in your neighborhood, whether in your estate, town, association, whatever it is, ask for wisdom, ask for justice, ask for righteousness, the ability to do right, the ability to be just in all that you do. And when you ask for this, God will give you what you are not even asking for. Shout hallelujah. I pray that these will be written boldly upon the tables of our heart in the name of Jesus. Number two, let's look at the second thing we need to note. Verse 2, Psalm 72, verse 2. You can put one and two together. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Give your love of justice to the king, O God, and righteousness to the king's son. Help him to do what? Judge your people in the right way and let the poor always be treated fairly. Hallelujah. Help him to judge your people in the right way. The second thing to note is justice and righteousness, they are the leader's instruments for ruling and reigning and maintaining a just and an equitable society under God. Justice and righteousness, they are the leader's instruments. Remember, number one, we said they are gifts from the Lord. And number two, they are God's instruments. They are the leader's instrument for ruling and reigning and maintaining a just and an equitable society under God. Hallelujah. Proverbs 29.4. Proverbs 29.4, NKJV. The king establishes the land by justice. He establishes the land by justice. Proverbs 29.4. But he who receives bribes overthrows it. Verse 14, ESV. Verse 14 of the same Proverbs 29. If a king faithfully judges the poor, his throne shall be established for how long? Forever. Perpetuity. We talk about it being perpetual. If a king faithfully judges the poor, <clears throat> his throne will be established forever. What was the hallmark of President Yaradua that made you to remember him? What was touted about him? Why do you call him a good leader? Those of you that say Yaradua, maybe you are right, but why? What were the things that were touted about him? Take note of my word, touted. The things that we had that were said about him. He left hordes of money that he didn't spend in his state. And when, late, when President Obasanjo had, he said, this is the man for the job. Hallelujah. The state had so much money accumulated he did some things. He built Casina State University and he did many other things and yet he left tons of money for the state. Whether a state government is to save money, I don't know about that. Or they are to use the money for the benefit of the people. I don't, that's a different subject. But if a king faithfully judges the poor, his throne will be established forever. When you serve well and you use the instrument of justice and righteousness properly, your throne will be established forever. People and generations will remember you. Can I have an amen? They will remember you for as long as they can. Verse 26 of the same Proverbs 29. Many seek the face of a ruler but it is from the Lord that a man gets justice. Many seek the face of a ruler, but it is from the Lord that a man gets justice. Shout hallelujah. It is from the Lord that a man gets justice. 
or from a king that is ruling by justice and righteousness. Shout hallelujah. I hope we are following. These are the very basic foundations. It is a profound topic that as we get into the midst of it, you will see what God has modeled for us. Shout hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Second Samuel 23, Second Samuel 23, verse 3. King David, the son of Jesse, the man raised up on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob, the sweet psalmist of Israel. He declared as the Holy Spirit spoke to him in his last words in 2 Samuel 23, verse 3. 2 Samuel 23, verse 3. Remember, we are saying justice and righteousness. They are the leader's instrument for ruling and reigning and maintaining a just and an equitable society under God. The God of Israel has spoken. The rock of Israel has said to me, when one rules justly over men, ruling in the fear of God, what happens? Or he who rules, hallelujah, praise God forevermore. Give it to me in the New King James. He who rules over men must be what? Must be just, ruling in the fear of God. If you are going to rule over men, whether as a small company of 10 people or a large conglomerate, God expects you to rule in a just manner, in a fair manner, in an equitable manner, ruling in the fear of God. Shout hallelujah. Isaiah 32 verse 1. Isaiah 32 verse 1. Behold, a king will reign in righteousness and princes we rule with justice. A king will reign in righteousness. Princes will rule with justice. We're talking about justice and righteousness being the leader's instruments for ruling and reigning and maintaining a just and an equitable society under God. Ezekiel 45, verses 9 and 10. Ezekiel 45. Ezekiel 45, verses 9 and 10. The subtitle says, The Lord's governing the prince. First says the Lord God, Enough, O princes of Israel, put away violence and oppression and execute what? Justice and righteousness. Seize your evictions of my people, declares the Lord. Hallelujah. I love the new King James. It says, Stop dispossessing my people, says the Lord. Enough, O princes of Israel, remove violence and plundering, execute justice and righteousness, and stop dispossessing my people, says the Lord. Verse 10. You shall have honest skills, an honest effort, and an honest bath. The message. Let's look at it in the message. I've put up with you long enough, princes of Israel. Quit bullying and taking advantage of my people. Do what is just and right for a... Do what is just and right for a... For a change. That's the call of God to leaders all over the nation at various levels, whether at local government, whether at the state government, or even at the federal government, or in the judiciary, or in the assembly. He says, I've put up with you long enough. Quit bullying and taking advantage of my people. It's beckoning on leaders to do what is just and right for a change. Shout hallelujah. Friends, righteousness and justice, they are the first virtue of government. And the king or the leader, they ought to be the guardians of justice and protector of the poor. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. We'll go to Jeremiah 22. This is God's epitaph on rulership. A message for Judah's kings. Jeremiah 22, we'll read from verse 1. New Living Translation. We'll read 1 to 5, then jump 11 to 19. And 
will be drawing the curtain tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. A message for Judas kings. This is what the Lord says to me. Go over and speak directly to the king of Judah. Say to him, listen to this message from the Lord, you king of Judah, sitting on David's throne. Let your attendants and your people listen to. This is what the Lord says. Be what? Fair-minded and... Can we read on? Do what is right. Help those who have been robbed. Rescue them from their oppressors. Quit your evil deeds. Do not mistreat foreigners, orphans, and widows. Stop murdering the innocent. Verse 4. If you obey me, there will always be a descendant of David sitting on the throne here in Jerusalem. The king will ride through the palace gates in chariots and on horses with his parade of attendants and subjects. Read on. But if you refuse to pay attention to this warning, I swear by my own name, says the Lord, that this palace will become a pile of rubble. It will become a pile of what? Because he wants everyone in leadership to rule and reign and be just and fair and to rule in righteousness. Verse 11. For this is what the Lord says about Jehoahaz, who succeeded his father, King Josiah, and was taken away as a captive. He will never... He will die in a distant land and will never again see his own country. This is God's warning to leaders who think they are the owners of the land or the owners of the people. Because the Bible says the earth is the Lord's. The world and all they that dwell in her. It doesn't belong to any man. Where are those who boasted yesteryears? Where are they today? And the Lord says, what sorrow awaits Jehoiakim, who builds his palace with what? First labor. He builds injustice into his walls, for he makes his neighbors work for nothing. He does not pay them for their labor. He says, I will build a magnificent palace with huge rooms and many windows. I will panel it throughout with fragrant cedar and I will paint it a lovely... I will paint the town red. That's where it's coming from. You know that phrase. It said he painted the town red. It's from the Bible. Hallelujah. But a beautiful palace does not make a great... <laughs> Hallelujah. Your father, Josiah, also had plenty to eat and drink, but he was just and right in all his dealings. That is why God blessed him. Next. But he was just and right. That is why God blessed him. Verse 16. He gave justice and help to the poor and the needy, and everything went well for him. For every leader who is ruling with justice and giving help to the poor and the needy, everything will go well with them. I say everything will go well with them. In the name of Jesus. And to those who do us wise, we'll see in a minute. Isn't that what it means to know me, says the Lord? If you claim you know the Lord, then you should take care. You should be beneficent. Remember we told us, you should be helpful to those you are leading. Helpful to the society. Hallelujah. Next verse, 17. But you, you have eyes only for greed and dishonesty. You murder the innocent, you oppress the poor, and you reign ruthlessly. Please go on. Verse 18. Therefore, this is what the Lord says about Jehoiakim, son of King Josiah. The people will not mourn for him. Crying to one another, alas, my brother, alas, my sister. His subjects will not mourn for him. Crying, alas, our master is dead. Alas, his splendor is gone. Hmm. He will be buried like a dead donkey, dragged out of Jerusalem and dumped outside the gates. Hallelujah. May that never be your portion. I say, may that never be your portion. But may that be the portion of those who will fail to yield 
to the warning of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. The word of God is complete. When you do right, there's provision for his blessings in abundance. And when you do wrong, there are also provisions. There is no sitting on the fence with God. We are either right or wrong. And I've taught you that before. God is a digital God. Gone are those days of analog. I illustrated it with you. I illustrated it for you with your analog TV. Many of you never saw the analog TV. Hallelujah. Those decorative boxes in your grandfather's sitting room. Hallelujah. When there is poor signal, you'll be seeing the picture. It's doing like this. Shaking. And they have two buttons. One is V hold, vertical hold. The other one is H hold, horizontal hold. So when you tune this one, if it's doing like this, it will adjust horizontal. If you tune the V hold, if it's doing like this, it will adjust it and then it will be clear. But these days it's digital. Is either there is signal or no? Is either zero or one? God is a digital God. You're either right or... And that's why he said in Romans, because you are neither hot nor cold, I will do what? I will spill you out of my mouth. There is no middle of ground. You're either in or out. Shout hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Glory to God. Amos 5, verses 21 to 24, in closing. Amos 5, verses 21 to 24. And this is addressing we, the men of cloth. The men of cloth are the religious leaders and their congregations. God also has a word for us. Can I have an amen? I hate, I despise your feasts, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Can I have an amen? Why is God saying that? He says, even though you offer me your burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I will not accept them. You are not asking why. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Give me NLT of verse 21 before we come to 22. Why does he say, I hate, I despise your fees? I do not serve all your sacred assemblies. I hate all your show and pretense. The hypocrisy of your religious festivals and solemn assembly. Hypocrisy, he said. Go back and give me verse 22. He says, though you offer me, verse 22. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the peace offerings of your fattened animals, I will not look upon them. Why? Take away from me the noise of your songs to the melody of your harps, I will not listen. Somebody say, why? But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. That is what concerns God. It's not about your burnt offerings. It's not about your solemn assemblies. It's more concerned about justice and righteousness. Much more than anything else. Whether in business, whether in politics, whether at home or in church, God's concern is that leaders will rule with justice. They will lead with justice. They will govern with justice and righteousness much more than every other thing that we do. Can I have an amen? Can it be plainer than this? Whether it's in the mountain of business, what he wants is that those who rule in the affairs of men must be just and fair. Whether it's in church, what he wants is justice and righteousness. Whether it's in politics, what he wants is justice and righteousness. On every plane where there is leadership being practiced, what God wants is justice and righteousness. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Friends, justice and righteousness, they are the political leader's instruments for ruling and reigning and maintaining a just and an equitable society. They are also the business leader's instruments for achieving and sustaining a healthy and a profitable corporate governance in the marketplace. The business leader's instruments for achieving and sustaining a healthy and a profitable corporate governance in the marketplace under God. 
and they are also the religious leaders' acceptable instruments for leading their followers into God's presence to be imparted with life that can change societies. Shout hallelujah. You can sing all the songs of praise and worship, but if the leader is not leading with justice and righteousness, it is never acceptable before God. Shouts hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. <laughs> hallelujah. I'm sure you can do better than that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We'll pray in a while, but let's give room for questions. If you have any questions, then we'll endeavor to provide answers and then we'll pray. So whatever the level of leadership you are in, if you are living a unit of five people, he wants you to rule being just, being fair, in the fear of God, with justice and righteousness. If you are leading a conglomerate of thousands, it's the same principle. If you are leading within the church, it's the same. If you are leading your family, it's the same thing. His principles are universal, and that is his expectation from all men in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We'll throw the ball open. If you have your questions, we'll take them. We'll give room for two questions tonight. Shout hallelujah. And for the next couple of weeks, we'll be looking at this God factor in governance. And I want you to know that it's your duty. You must spread the word through every media available to you. Hallelujah. Perhaps God will move over the heart of our leaders and they will be opened, their hearts will be opened to receive these gifts. They are God's gifts from the Lord. He's eager to give it to as many as we open up their hearts and say, Lord, here I am in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Any questions? Amen. Shall we rise up on our feet tonight if there are none? I would like you to pray in this message into yourself. Somebody says, Pastor, there's nobody I'm leading. You have yourself to lead. There's a leadership of one. You can begin by leading yourself. You must learn to lead yourself in fairness, in justice. You must be just to yourself. You must lead in righteousness. Do the right things to yourself and to others. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice and let's pray tonight. I say, Lord, help me. This gift, I desire it. You are the one that gives the gift of justice and righteousness to the king and his princes. Father, we have been made kings and priests unto you. Lord, I open up my heart to receive this gift of justice, this gift of righteousness, being fair-minded, being just, being moral. I open up my heart to receive it from you in the name of Jesus. I receive the gift of leadership from you in the name of Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help me. I know that it takes your help because these are gifts from you. And they are, the, they are my instruments for ruling, for reigning in righteousness. Yes, so that I can have a just and an equitable society. I can have a just and equitable family under God. I can have an, a just and equitable business under God. Father, help me. Help me. Endow me with this gift in the name of Jesus. Rakapo shikaturia masakata. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Open up your heart and submit and surrender your heart to him. Say, Lord, I need this gift. The gift of your justice, of your righteousness. Psalm 72, verse 1. Please put it on the screen. Pray that in. Give your gift of justice and righteousness to the king and righteousness to the princes or to the sons of the king. Give your love of justice to the king. Father, give me your love of justice. Help me to love justice. Help me to love justice in the name of Jesus. Father, give your love of justice to me, O God, that I will love justice much more than every other thing. 
I will love righteousness more than every other thing. In the name of Jesus. Ask for this love. That the Lord will give you this love of justice. He will give you this love for righteousness. You will love to be just. You will love to do right things at all times. In the name of Jesus. Give your love of justice to me, O Lord. In the name of Jesus. Give your love of righteousness to me, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, Rekebo Siferia Masanda, Mezanda Rabako Shekataya, La Rapako Zebata Rabako Zegataya, Pako Zegataya, Reka Papa Pasekataya, Mezando Rabase Praka Sekata, Zendo Rabaka Sepakataya Pako Zegate, Oh, Masse Praka Sekateria. Thank you, Father. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed.